Hey everyone, did you miss me? I couldn't give less a damn if you did or not. I got important news from the crew, so shut it and listen up. There's nothing we hate more than imitations. We see you, United Kingdom. This is your only warning. Cling those belts tight, boys. Not because we want them. Ross sucks. Smackdown is where we roll. But because we want to be the ones at bragging rights to punk you out. Tonight's an important night for the crew, because when Book and Mark beat Ray again, next week Book becomes IC champ. When me and Truth win tonight, the crew will be next up for the tag titles at the cell next Sunday. And while Mark and Truth grab the tag gold, I'm going to be locked in the cell with Austin. Only one of us comes out alive, Austin, and it ain't you, chump. Because after next Sunday, the champ is here, and the crew runs this town. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Reach 12 Universe. My name is Jitch, and this is Friday Night Smackdown. Kicking things off the only way we know how to on Smackdown. probably already heard and if you didn't I'm not sure how you got to this point without seeing it. Booker T and Mark Henry are set to face off once again against Rey Mysterio and of course Mr. McMahon. Who else would Rey Mysterio ever team with other than his best friend in the whole universe Mr. McMahon? So Rey Mysterio and Mr. McMahon are set to face off against Booker T and Mark Henry and if Booker and Mark win this match the next week for the Intercontinental Championship here on Smackdown two days before Hell in a Cell that man right there Booker T faces Rey Mysterio for the Intercontinental Championship. What a match that should be. It's gonna be an interesting one that's for sure but what's really interesting about this is that whoever wins next week on Smackdown has to go up against a new number one contender the very next Sunday, just two days later, uh, as we've got a number one contenders match between Shawn Michaels and John Morrison up next. So it's a busy week for the Intercontinental title. <clears throat> Marcus Henrius making his way down to the ring. And uh, this guy here looking to become a future tag team champion with her. The crew basically decided that they want the gold here on SmackDown, but it's quite interesting. They don't actually want the gold for the sake of dominating the brand. They want the gold for the sake of gang warfare, basically. They want to be the superior crew. And right now there's a, there's a group over on Raw, the United Kingdom, that are doing better than they are, and they don't like it. So they want all the gold now. And they also want... Uh, they want um, to then take down the United Kingdom when the champions collide at bragging rights. As we know, it's champions against champions at bragging rights. Intercontinental against US. Uh, tag team against tag team. Women's against women's. Worlds against worlds. <coughs> women's against divas and WWE tag against world tag and WWE against world heavyweight. I don't know why I said it so weird the first time. Mysterio has been in an incredibly tough situation. He, uh, he's been trying to deal with the crew as best as he can as they continue to target him as the Intercontinental Champion. We don't know if necessarily it's because of the championship that he carries, but we do know that Mysterio has been a top target for the crew lately, and it doesn't seem to be easing up at all. 
Maybe next week, Booker T coming for the Intercontinental Championship if he wins here tonight. And I don't like Mysterio's odds. He has not been particularly successful uh, since teaming with Mr. McMahon here on SmackDown every Friday. This would mark, I think, the third or fourth loss in a row if uh, he loses. But I just don't see McMahon suddenly turning around and being this great tag team partner. The ECW general manager was revealed this Tuesday getting rid of NXT and becoming the general manager of the returning ECW where he now has his own roster, his own brand. He couldn't be less invested in helping Rey Mysterio right now, that's for damn sure. This guy is not going to be the kind of partner that you want in your corner, but unfortunately for Mysterio, it's all he's got. So he's got to, he's got to make the most of a bad situation and try to make a decent tag team partner out of Mr. McMahon, as difficult as that may be. And speaking of uh, trying to make a decent part tag team partner, Ray saying, look, just step back. Let me do this. You're a general manager. You're not a wrestler. Mr. McMahon's been under kind of like a temporary employment here on SmackDown as a superstar, all due to his um, breaking of the rules uh, over on Raw when he was abusing his power. Teddy Long has been uh, basically given free reign on letting McMahon do whatever he wants, and Teddy has decided he didn't really want to use McMahon, but because McMahon is caught up in the midst of this rivalry between Mysterio and the crew, well, he's just going to have to carry on being Mysterio's tag team partner, which is almost punishment for the Intercontinental Champion himself, but uh, surprisingly, somehow, Teddy Long sleeps at night knowing what he's doing to Rey Mysterio. <coughs> SmackDown took a really huge loss this Tuesday uh, as um, ECW took some of the SmackDown roster, including the top contender for the WWE Championship, Vader, who went on to become ECW Champion on his first night on the job. Things are definitely going to be very different here on SmackDown without the presence of Vader after the, the um, impact that he made in the short period of time he came up here to SmackDown. And all the congratulations to him from SmackDown as the new ECW champion. However, when bragging rights comes around and it's, you know, all brands against each other, we've been told that Vader will be included in the Champion of Champions match as the ECW will be included. It's going to be a very interesting match. I believe that we're also going to be seeing uh, a match between the two tertiary champions. This is going to be a hardcore champion versus light heavyweight champion match. R-Truth up against uh, whoever the hardcore champion is at the time. And yes, I did say light heavyweight champion. It wasn't mentioned, as obviously we've only got 12 lines, but Cena also stated that uh, R-Truth has introduced the light heavyweight championship. It will carry the same lineage as the cruiserweight championship, the same history entirely. Everyone who's a former cruiserweight champion is a former light heavyweight champion too. All he's done is simply redesigned the belt, renamed the belt, and lifted the weight limit a little bit higher. I believe now you can challenge for the championship anywhere up to 225 to 230 ish pounds. Just kind of lifting that weight limit that little bit more. As our uh, truth wants to welcome all challenges, he's not afraid to take on people. So we got the light heavyweight championship here on SmackDown now instead of the cruiserweight championship. Rey Mysterio coming into this match tonight, by the way, has been holding the Intercontinental Championship for a total of. 119 days going into next week's SmackDown day 126. It's a very long time to be the uh, Intercontinental Champion, and I think he's almost hoping he doesn't have to defend it next week on SmackDown as well as at bragging rights. But all he's going to do is come out of this one with the win. Mysterio with 11 to 11 overall record, uh, 9 to 5 this past season. A lot of those losses due to teaming with Mr. McMahon. Just not a favorable tag team partner. It's not exactly been easy for Rey Mysterio. The crew 4-2. That includes history when it was just Mark Henry and our truth though. They weren't quite as successful as they have been since the allegiance of John Cena and Booker T joined. McMahon is actually getting offense in. 
Mr. McMahon, for those curious, is 1-5, to five. so that says a lot about Resenterio's uh, loss record, considering McMahon has only ever competed in two other matches. One of those he won, the match was restarted and he lost. So, uh, basically, four of Mysterio's losses this season are because of Mr. McMahon being just a terrible tag team partner, and I think it might honestly be five, although, that being said, he does seem to be turning things around a little bit in this matchup. <clears throat> Booker T, since his debut, has been uh, three to four. I'm sorry, three to two. There's uh, certain two losses that happened before he was working here. Uh, but so far, since coming to SmackDown, he's three to two. Man's really, uh, he's trying something here. And of course, McMahon takes the loss. It's still a Intercontinental Championship opportunity for Booker T. It doesn't really matter how it happens, whether McMahon gets himself disqualified, whether McMahon gets counted out. It all costs Rey Mysterio two championship defenses. One would have to assume, though, with Mysterio do an Intercontinental Championship uh, rematch, he could always join in on the match the following Sunday at Hell in a Cell should he lose the title to Booker T next Friday. He thinks he has it. And he's All through into a pin, and here comes right, and nope. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mr. McMahon and Rey Mysterio double-teaming Booker T. We've seen this once before by Booker, but he's going for it again. Mysterio's got a lot of investment in this match. He's got to go with the assumption that not only is he going to win this match, but on the off chance that he loses this match, um, he's got to go off of the assumption that he's then also going to have to retain the Intercontinental Championship next Friday, and then try to retain it two days later. Two defenses in a week. In a span of three days. <clears throat> Hell in a Cell really just came out of nowhere. John Cena just literally issued the open challenge to Stone Cold Steve Austin. We know that tonight uh, John Cena is going to be facing off against Triple H. The winner becomes the contender to Stone Cold's WWE Championship. However, Stone Cold not too concerned as he's already vested both of those two in the past. Also to come tonight in our... Oh wait, no. What are we talking about? John Cena is already going to end Sorry, I, I got a little mix-up. I got mixed up between an idea I had and what I actually went with. Sorry, John Cena issued the challenge to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Of course, Stone Cold naturally just accepted. My bad. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Our main event tonight, a tag team matchup as John Cena, the number one contender for the WWE Championship, teams up with... Um, R-Truth, the light heavyweight champion, to face off against the former cruiserweight champion, Tyson Kidd, and a tag team partner of his choosing. Kidd has had a lot of struggles finding anyone willing to go up against the crew. Obviously, they have really left their mark. Speaking of mark... What the hell? We saw it all in this match, King. And those repeated blows to the skull have definitely taken their toll. Well, I don't know if the head was intentionally focused Ray going to make the tag with McMahon mouthing off to a fan in the audience. A very McMahon thing to do. <clears throat> I guess Ray decided he's not even going to bother trying to tag McMahon in at this point. Booker T getting absolutely pummeled by Ray Mysterio right now. Uh, Ray, Ray needs to check his head. I don't think he quite knows what he's doing right now. <laughs> he's uh, not not feeling a hundred percent, obviously. And this seesaw battle has changed again. Watch it. And he powers out. A flattening clothesline by Booker T. Pin center of the ring. Oh, about to say if he can repeat that next week, he might be in a Cornell champion when he gets that pinfall. Well, he would be. Referee telling him to get out of the ring. 
Clark Henry drop McMahon with a with a bear hug there, and oh okay, Ray very quick to get out. Oh. Oh dear, here he comes. Somehow, some way, Mr. McMahon got the tag in. Feeling pretty high on himself right now. He's a. Uh, and in the most McMahon way possible, he blew it. I can't believe and then he wanted to get the hell out of there. Not a surprise. Again, a very McMahon thing to do. <clears throat> oh, Henry, like a steamroller. No. <laughs> Fight the damn match. I feel so bad for Ray. I was say, every Friday it's just been the same thing. <laughs> Getting beat down. <laughs> oh, come on. And now his partner comes in. No. Stop fucking around. Very aggressive assault to the back. Not fast enough. McMahon doing everything he can to try and help Rey Mysterio. I mean, a win's still a win for McMahon. <laughs> I wish he'd stop doing moves like that, though. McMahon, oh jeez. One day Austin's gonna see him doing that. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna be too thrilled. Not even a counterable move. I pressed the reverse button. I know that in these older games they had that. They had irreversible moves. Henry. Uh -oh, trying to put him away. Big kick to the face of Mr. And McMahon. And here's a pin attempt from Booker T. That's got to be enough. And McMahon once again costs Mysterio a match. Once again. So next week for the Intercontinental Championship, it's Booker T and Rey Mysterio and Mr. McMahon. Look at this. I mean, he doesn't care anymore. He doesn't have a reason to. He's got his own show that he actually cares about again. He was really starting to lose faith in Raw. And now that he's the ECW General Manager, he doesn't give a damn. So of course he's going to turn his back on Mysterio. This isn't exactly a surprising revelation. Mr. McMahon doing everything he can to get away from SmackDown, and I think he's just done it. Well, last week, I think it was quite the cage match between these two. <coughs> hmm, excuse me. That took place. Uh, Shawn Michaels really doing everything he can to best John Morrison, but Morrison was able to escape. Two days later at Night of Champions, though, D Generation X were able to retain the Tag Team Championships. And what I think was a pretty good match between John Morrison and The Miz and DX. But uh, here tonight, another opportunity arises. John Morrison going to face up against Shawn Michaels once again. And the winner of this match will be going on to face uh, the Intercontinental Champion, whoever that may be after next Friday, for the title at Hell in a Cell. It's a high pressure time to be the Intercontinental Champion. Hands off the match. Joel Morrison has been in pursuit of the Intercontinental Championship for quite some time. 
Will this finally be his time to do it? The uh, status of Morrison and The Miz as a tag team is kind of up in air right now after their tag team loss. Morrison had to say backstage that he felt The Miz had gone soft. He's not really feeling what's happened to The Miz just lately. And I think we're starting to see a little bit of dissension between The Miz and John Morrison, which is a little bit shocking, to say the least. And it, regardless, John Morrison comes in today. 7-14 to record, 4-4 to this season. <clears throat> Tonight, he tries to prove once again that he could best Shawn Michaels, even outside of the ability to just climb out of a cage. Shawn Michaels comes in this match 14-14, to 5-5 to this season, same as always with Michaels, keeping it right down the middle. 9-9 to -9 season 1, 5-5 to -5 this season. Here we go, Intercontinental Championship Contenders match. The winner of this match will face off against either Booker T or Rey Mysterio, or both, I don't know, next Sunday at Hell in a Cell for the Intercontinental Championship. And Morrison is absolutely laying into Shawn Michaels to start this one. Okay. <clears throat> and ladies and gentlemen, that was vintage Michaels. Right, vintage Michaels. Michaels very quick to uh, keep himself in control. I mean, desperation comes in many forms. That can break your back. Intercepted. Insecurity, what a shot to the head. Head kick. Hey. Oh man, he got turned inside out. Morrison is just absolutely <laughs> laying into Shawn Michaels, a former WWE champion, might I add. What's he planning here? Ah! What a huge move! Oh, man. Morrison insists that uh, it's the Miz that's gone soft between them. He's still got it. Right now, I think he's kind of showing that. Very interesting to see. Uh, Shawn Michaels come out with the victory here tonight, as I think he'd have to then work double duty at Hell in a Cell. I mean, they could always push the Tag Team Championship match forward to SmackDown. Uh, <clears throat> I think that would be fair to make him not have to do double duty. As we know, uh, there's a contenders match tonight between uh, John Cena and uh, Truth up against um, Tyson Kidd and a partner of his choosing, whoever he can find. They'll be coming as the next Tag Team Champions contenders. Not a lot of takers for Tyson Kidd's opportunity, despite a championship opportunity, going up against John Cena and R-Truth, a former WWE Champion, quite a dominant former WWE Champion, and uh, the current reigning light heavyweight champion. It's understandable that that would be something you wouldn't really want to face up to, and of course the crew comes in a four-man unit as well. Doesn't exactly make things any easier for them. Oh jeez, Sean, are you okay? <laughs> that didn't look so good. Morrison is absolutely laying into Shawn Michaels right now. I don't know what's, what's off about Michaels, but something's not right. What does Morrison have to do at this point, King? Coming up after bragging rights, though, we've got something even bigger and better. Because uh, then we're going to have Survivor Series as we finally hit the month of November. And we hit one year since it all began. Look forward to seeing what happens at the Survivor Series. But of course, bragging rights, a very interesting and unique concept that I don't think we'll be seeing again. I think it's literally just this one time, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how things pan out when SmackDown faces Raw at bragging rights. Will it be gang warfare? Will we see what the crew are hoping for? Very competitive, these two. I thought Michaels had a reversal up his sleeve there, but Morrison was able to connect, and... Morrison trying to fly, but every time he does, he just kind of doesn't connect quite right. Big chop. Uh-oh. Michaels. Got a move of his own there. Didn't quite work out too well. 
And here comes Morrison. Coming off the ropes now. What the fuck? What went wrong there? There was no button press. And here comes Alex Riley. I mean, he's got his issues with with John Morrison. Pile driver. Ah yes, the top rope super kick, a classic move. HBK hoping to play his favorite song. Very close proximity. Oh geez, got all of that. And here comes Rey Mysterio. What the hell is this? The Intercontinental Champion himself. Incoming. Good grief. Now that's what I call I mean. I know that Riley is a top contender for the Intercontinental Championship, but I don't really know what the hell those two are doing out here. Was Riley actually trying to maybe bond with Morrison, maybe try to reunite the Misfits without the Miz? I mean, obviously they need a different name. Mo Morrison has been saying that Miz has lost his killer instinct to replace the Miz, but bring back the old group. That actually makes a lot of sense. Shawn Michaels getting pretty frustrated as he tells Riley to get the hell out of here. And here comes Morrison. But of course, no sold. <laughs> oh no. This match is absolutely devolving now. This might be saving John Morrison's uh, bacon though, to be honest. Oh boy. Maybe Alex Riley and John Morrison are in cahoots. Maybe what I just suggested is already a reality. Maybe Ryder, Riley, and Morrison are already a unit and the Miz is out. I'll tell you what, regardless of that, Michaels... Oh boy! <laughs> Got all of that. This is becoming a very personal fight. Michaels obviously did not like losing that cage match. Morrison, wake up. Wrong fucking guy, dude. There you go. Where the hell is Morrison's signature? What a move. What a smart move. Morrison. Oh, hold up a second. Okay. Out of nowhere. Hits Michaels with his finishing move. And what a match that was. That was actually incredibly competitive. It almost went against my plans. Thanks, Michaels. Wow, what a victory for John Morrison. That was really competitive between these two. Shawn Michaels really thought he had the job done, but Riley came out. We don't really know what the, the deal with that was, but uh, Riley, very suspect getting involved in this match. I don't, I don't trust it. Maybe John Morrison and Alex Riley are allies, but regardless of that, up next we got the Divas! As it's gonna be Eve against Beth Phoenix as we try to find out who is next in line for Natalia's Divas Championship. I was just grabbing my drink, damn it. God damn it! Beth Phoenix, former Divas, no, no, she's never held it, actually, sorry, former Women's Champion. She wanted to be the first woman ever to hold both the Divas and Women's Championships. She's had that be quite elusive, and just lately she's been completely absent from the scene. But let's not forget what happened back at, uh... 
Night of Champions. I couldn't remember the name of the show this just happened. Let's not forget what happened back at Night of Champions. Beth Phoenix was the reason that Natalia kept the Divas Championship, and it wasn't in the most respectable way, as she got uh, Natalia disqualified. There's been a lot of frustration vented from Maurice over the fact that this match tonight is even happening, as she believes she should be the rightful contender to the Divas Championship. And she raises a good point, as Maurice says, um, that if this were the other way around, and it were Maurice getting uh, herself disqualified, Natalia would have instantly been given a rematch, as we did see time and time again. But because it was Maurice on the butt end of things, and Natalia was the one getting herself disqualified, it, it was ignored and allowed. It's an injustice. In a way, I can't really argue with that. That is very true. Every time Maurice got herself disqualified, there was an outcry, there was a need for justice and to make things right. But, uh, Natalia gets herself disqualified once, and, oh, it was Beth Phoenix's fault. Natalia had no idea. Let's be more fair to the Divas Champion. <clears throat> Does seem a little bit twisted. Regardless, Eve got one singular, singular victory over Natalia on the final episode of NXT. Uh, and that is what leads to this match here tonight, up against Natalia's best friend and partner in crime, Beth Phoenix. Two people who have a very interesting chemistry. They know that they are both professional wrestlers. They both have the same goal, the Divas Championship. And they're both very open at the idea of facing each other for the championship. <clears throat> they insist that it would never become personal. Their bond would never be broken and they could survive a championship match just fine. We have seen them compete up against each other before and make it out alive just fine, but it's never been for a championship, so we don't know how much of a difference that could make. <clears throat> As my voice continues to die. We've been recording a series where I've been doing all kinds of voices, and my voice has been fine for that other than the first episode. But one episode where all I have to do is talk normally, and <laughs> that's it, my voice is dying. <clears throat> Man, I'm like Michael Cole at any, any pay-per-view. Circle like 2012 when he actually gave a shit, of course. Beth Phoenix is so powerful, never lacking in confidence. That's a horrible accusation. I don't know if he gives a shit. I don't want to just shit on a guy. <clears throat> I, just, I remember when I last watched like a current show in like 2017. He didn't seem to have much of a passion for it anymore. But I've seen people say that he's the best commentator they've got now, so... I don't know, maybe he's alright. But I've heard people say Byron Saxton's back. Byron Saxton is all right now, so I don't know. I'm clearly very out of touch, which would happen when you haven't watched a current show in multiple years, outside of some highlights, some clips, and some news bits. I'm not sorry. Wrestling is a very time-consuming thing. I'd rather make wrestling videos than uh, watch a wrestling show. I will eventually look into some of the newer stuff, because obviously I'm aware that once I hit, like, 2K18, um, there's going to be a bunch of people I don't know, and that's only going to increase as every game goes on. You know, there are a lot of people in 2K20 when I was playing it uh, that I'm not ultra familiar with, but they seem pretty good. So I want to I wanna obviously give it a try, it's just, uh, I'll do that when the time comes. <laughs> not, like just whenever I get the opportunity. At the moment, I'm watching the classics. That's going smooth, I guess. Ugh. No. Not this time. Michael, I love diva matches. No. I hope heaven is kind of like this. No. Skull rattling. Well, we still got that tag team match coming up in our main event. 
Dan Cena and our truth up against Tyson Kidd and a mystery partner. It's gonna have to be someone big to come back, John Cena and our truth. Ew. Stop talking, Lola. Devastating shot to the spine and back. All the damage to the torso, all the pain that's been dealt, appears to have finally taken its toll. Uh, Natalia is currently the longest reigning Divas champion. I don't think he had a lot of competition, admittedly. Uh, of, co of course, you know, we haven't even got a year yet, so of course the longest reigning champions are going to come by a little more frequently. Well, here we go. There it is. I can't remember what she calls that all of a sudden. Glam Slam, that's it. Is that going to be enough to get the victory over Eve? Of course it is. So at Hell in a Cell, the Divas of Doom face off one on one for the Divas Championship. Here's your winner, the Glamazon, Beth Phoenix. And what a Hopefully Maurice will at least be the next contender, because it's not really fair to uh, not get a, a rematch after losing by disqualification. But for now, Phoenix is the uh, contender. And up next, we got a tag team championship match. Contenders match even. <laughs> the Cruz, John Cena, and our truth up against um, sort of Tyson Kidd and a mystery partner. But we think that he may have found a partner. Now, cut to that right now. See you in a minute. Hey, bud, how's it going? You found anyone to team with yet? Listen, you're an experienced former tag team champion. You got this. I know that, Christian. I've held more gold than you. But I'll be honest, there's not exactly many people who'd step up to the crew. Look no further, buddy. This former WWE champ is willing to team with you. All right, Christian, just don't let me down. We got this man for Canada. Uh, yeah, for Canada. Okay, here we go. Main event. Ooh, tag team match. Contenders match. Yes. <clears throat> Any minute now. As you've seen just a moment ago backstage, Tyson Kidd and Christian seem to have formed some kind of an alliance for Canada. So Truth's got the brand new light heavyweight championship, as I said before, welcoming all challenges, not just those of the cruiserweight division, but those a little bit heavier than the cruiserweights as well. <clears throat> I like the design a lot more than the uh, cruiserweight championship, but that's just me. You might disagree. I, for one, welcome this new belt. Again, there seems to be some kind of a retaliation, though, to the United Kingdom bringing over the European Championship. It's just, once again, um, as I say, they seem to have definitely picked a bit of a beef with them, whether it's uh, reciprocated or not. John, Jonathan Cenathan with his purple gear. Purple means he's angry. So it means that because I said so just now. There's nothing else to it. Sign of Christian just yet. Yeah, this is a little odd. I would have figured they would have come out together. No, oh, regardless, here's a uh, here's one half of the team anyway. Tyson Kidd getting some mild fan support. <laughs> 
There he is. Thought he was standing him up for a second. I don't know, I think the, the combination of Christian and Tyson Kidd has a lot of potential, but I also think that uh, Tyson Kidd just kind of had to settle for the first guy that came up to him, because Christian's track record isn't exactly the most impressive. I mean, Tyson Kidd said it himself, uh, he's held more championships than Christian. Yes, Christian has held the WWE Championship, and he also won the 2010 Royal Rumble, the first ever Royal Rumble, for that matter, but... Um, he hasn't really, it sounds kind of weird to say, but he hasn't really done a lot since, and his championship reign is very short-lived. So it's kind of hard to to be strongly in the corner of Christian. I mean, the guy was demoted down to NXT before that was killed off. Odds just aren't really in his favor, but... This was the best that uh, Tyson Kidd had come up to him. It was the only person Tyson Kidd had come up to him. Here we go. Tyson Kidd and Christian against Truth, John Cena, and of course the former Cruiserweight Champion facing off against the new X, X Division. Whoa, what the hell does that mean? The new Light Heavyweight Champion, R-Truth. Bridging German suplex, beautifully executed by the way. Always beautifully executed by Tyson Kidd. And here's a tag to a former WWE champion, John Cena and Christian. They've got that. <laughs> Excuse me. They've got their history when it comes to the WWE championship. I think that was uh, who, who beat Christian for the championship, which might be another contributing factor to why Christian wanted to team up with Tyson Kidd tonight. But also, we know that Tyson, uh, Christian has been chasing gold. He wants championship gold. And of course, the tag team championship is one he's never really had the chance at before. So, to maybe find an ally wouldn't, wouldn't hurt in Christian's, in Christian's defense, I guess. I don't know. Maybe a tag made to Tyson Kidd. Oh, we got some actual teamwork between these two. Very nice. There's a kind of a tag team move. And the Wii. I love the Wii. That's a good move. This is an old applied. Not going to be enough to make our truth tap out just yet. Nice catch. A statement. I guess for Tyson Kidd, the best thing he could do is make sure that John Cena doesn't make it into this match. The guy is uh, confident that he's going to be able to beat Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWE Championship next Sunday at Hell in a Cell. He would be ending the almost, I think at this point it's going to be, a 100 plus day reign of Stone Cold. The longest reigning world champion across all brands, as well as uh, the longest reigning WWE Champion, of course. Beat Triple H's record uh, back at Night of Champions, I believe. And he's on day 103, if not day 96. It's one of the two. And the agile R Truth lands a hard right. Can't really check that right now, though, I'm afraid. These competitors trying to keep their wits about Christian them. very careful to make sure that John Cena is not tagged in as I say uh, truth I mean a uh, truth the uh, kid and Christian I can't get my words right at the moment um, it's gonna be in their best interest to make sure that Cena isn't tagged at Christian these guys are giving it absolutely everything hey, he's welcoming it okay the man who ended his reign very prematurely it's John Cena a lot of people were not happy about John Cena, cena in WWE Champion Christian's reign, as people were so happy to see Christian with the championship. But of course, John Cena is John Cena, and there's nothing you can do except accept that he's John Cena. Trying to stay in complete another control of Mr. Cena. 
Throughout John Cena's career, he's never quit. No matter how tired he is, no matter how bruised and battered he is, John Cena keeps going. What the fuck happened there? Christian right to the face. <laughs> okay. He doesn't want me to tag out. Cool. Christian is absolutely all over John Cena right now. I mean, he's been working hard to get back here on the SmackDown after the whole NXT debacle. You know that now he's only going to be on SmackDown regardless. There is no other show for people to kind of go down to now. Right across the face. John Cena getting a little frustrated. You see it in his motions as he was getting to his feet there. Tyson Kidd actually overwhelming the former WWE champion. This is kind of uh, a rare sight. I mean, this is a rare match, to be honest. How often do you think you're going to see Tyson Kidd and John Cena in the ring together? You don't lock Tyson Kidd into a submission hold and expect success. Fans just do not like Cena. The moment he got some offense in, that was it. Some booze just came flooding in. Well, we know it would normally come here, but he doesn't feel like doing it right now, so he's not going to. Over the last 10 years, SmackDown has excited the WWE Universe with some of the most memorable moments in television history. And we're witnessing Tyson more Kidd trying his best to uh, get to his feet, and he does, and John Cena quickly striking down Christian, and it looks like he's shifted his focus, and Tyson Kidd, <laughs> he just bounced off the <laughs> immovable muscles of John Cena. Who does a methodical pace benefit? Well, that's obviously Tyson Kidd. And he's in there trying to get something going for his partner. Kid, whoop. And he hits a big time leg drop. What's big time, as they say. I wanted to fucking Christian, why'd you do that? We're gonna re retake the spot now. Christian! Stop it! <laughs> We can't just keep retaping the spot. <laughs> what a great match we have here on Friday night SmackDown. Watch out here. Billy back. Kid has traveled the world perfecting his craft. Incredible counter. Oh no, not the knee and slow shove. That's the worst move in the arsenal. Cena has held world titles on numerous occasions. Nobody has a champion's drive. Like John Cena. Christian kind of watching, watching on as uh, Cena got thrown down. into the ring there. Our truth not been tagged in in a little while. I gotta say, the combination of Christian and Tyson Kidd have actually uh, had some pretty solid chemistry, whereas we know Kidd and Cena, I mean, Truth and Cena have never teamed up before. This is the first time, uh, to my knowledge. And Kidd gonna actually help Chris, uh, Christian get the pin here on Cena. Oh. Well, I guess that should have been expected. It's John Cena. Oh, look out! Look at Cena go. Christian's now in a bit of trouble. Since 2002, John Cena has been electrifying. Cena, a lot of strikes, carrying them on. What's he got in mind here? A big leg drop. Okay. This match has been a hundred miles an hour since the opening bell. Christian with a nice reversal. Goes to make the tag to Tyson Kidd. A wise choice. Gotta let Tyson Kidd get in there, get some offense in. Almost halfway through the time limit of this match, could this tag team match go to a time up? There's no such thing as triple threat tag matches, so there's no telling what that will mean for the contendership of the WWE Tag Team Championship. I find it quite interesting that John Cena is competing on Mark Henry's behalf in this match. He's already made it clear he's not going for the tag team titles with truth. He's simply winning this contendership for the crew. They wanted to put their best man forward, I guess. They wanted to secure that opportunity. 
They went with a former WWE champion. Now, our truth tagged into the matchup. That's uh, that's a bit of a game changer, to be honest. Our truth leaping to the top. A tremendous oh, move. Once again, John Cena coming in. Now the crew kind of showing their chemistry. Kid trying to lure Cena to his corner, and I think that worked quite smoothly. Tyson Kid just watched as John Cena back down from him. Here comes Christian. Uh, big bridging German suplex. Is that a no? I think kid. And now here's the tag made to Christian. This is it. This has got to be it. This has got to be the moment. The kid student gets the win. Oh no. You can see the wear and tear that this fight has taken out of these men. Captain Christian's going up. Oh, no selling. No selling from our truth. Oh jeez. Is that going to be enough? He's going for a second one. That is fucking impossible to reverse. Man, Christian kicks out at one, despite two of our truth's biggest and best move, because Christian's the man. Just don't try to pin him again, please, Truth. Don't, don't do it. I know you probably will, but don't. Did he just get another one? How do you get another finisher for? I want free finishes. Give me free finishes. Here we go. Everybody's in the ring now. What an exciting move by Christian. That'll get the people fired up. And again, Christian. Come on, Christian. Big diving headbutt. Get the pin. Just win it win off of that. No, okay. And there's still plenty of fight left. the corner Tyson Kidd not taking the tag for some reason Christian going with a roll through right in the middle perfectly center stage there you go oh, okay Cena just couldn't get there in time I guess and just like that Tyson Kidd and Christian have secured a WWE Tag Team Championship match for Hell in a Cell Tell you what, with the fighting spirit of Christian, I bet Titan Kid is very glad that he agreed to team with Christian now. What a combination these two made. What a well-deserved tag team championship contenders victory. Two, two uh, people out of the blue, new contenders for the tag team titles. I can't wait to see what they do. Thank you all for watching this episode of SmackDown. I'll see you guys next week with another edition of SmackDown. Bye-bye.